Welcome back everyone to the Sim Racing Show, your one-stop shop for all of the news in the world of Sim Racing. So the Assetto Corsa Evo trailer has just been released and it has some interesting features, also some concerns. Gran Turismo 7 update 1.51 is coming very soon and we received a sneak peek from Kaz. The PS5 Pro actually features three Sim Racing games and yes, we've seen the first footage of GT7 gameplay on a PS5 Pro, which is very exciting. We've got a new retro sim racing game and we've got loads more sim racing news and updates from this week. But first of all, let's start with the to Evo. It's the big one and its features. So Kunos has officially sort of revealed the in-game, I don't want to say gameplay, but footage of to Evo with a trailer. They've also delayed the game. So it's now in early access for January 16, 2025 on PC. Now, obviously, to Corsa Evo is a highly anticipated sequel to to Corsa. We know it's going to feature amazing visuals. We now know it's going to have dynamic weather, day-night cycles, reflections. But I've got to be really honest with you because, you know, you're the viewers of this sim racing show. And for me, the trailer left a lot to be desired in terms of gameplay details. And while we saw some impressive looking wet weather and sliding physics, there's nothing on like career mode, multiplayer, or even just a confirmation on whether the game includes open world elements. We kind of inferred that, but it wasn't officially confirmed. We did see teased a lot of cars in the trailer from classics to modern vehicles. We've got the Alfa Romeo Giulia Sprint GT. We've got modern races like the Porsche 911 and Mercedes AMG GT. But to be honest, I could have made that trailer using footage I could record from any sim racing game currently on the market. So I think it's not really a great trailer. I think there's a lot of hype about Assetto Corsa Evo and I'm worried it's coming out in early access. Now, I want to talk about the open world stuff because they did hint at both track and public road driving. They showed the Nürburgring, they showed Fuji, but they also showed a car sort of going the wrong way on a road that looked to be just outside the North Life. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, But placeholder at the moment, early access, is it going to go the same way as Le Mans Ultimate? Where we're all concerned about the business model of the Ultimate. I don't really know what the long term plan is with Le Mans Ultimate. Also, something like Test Drive Unlimited, a recent open world, yeah, not a pure sim had massive issues on launch for Forza Motorsport, big issues on launch. So fingers crossed for Assetto Corsa Evo, but I promise you, I'm going to keep them really honest here. I'm going to give you my honest views on it. Gran Turismo 7 update 1.51. So a new update is coming to GT7. They announced this in sort of collaboration with their latest esports event in Tokyo. It brings three new cars, but to be honest, the reception has been really negative to this because people are saying this isn't really what we wanted. They are coming with another Nissan uh, GTR. So we've got R35 GTR, like the Skyline lineage. And we've got a, well, there's a, another van's coming. It looks like it's going to be the Toyota Hiace, which we've already seen like in a um, ambulance format. And it kind of like, what are Gran Turismo 7 doing right now? Like if Assetto Corsa Evo absolutely smashed their launch and it becomes like the game to play or sim racing game to play on PC and console, this could be pretty worrying for GT7. So I don't know if GT7 are keeping their powder dry or what they're doing or base of the game isn't being supported i don't know lots of theories about it final car coming in that update by the way is a mitsubishi lancer evo so it's another familiar car but not really scratching the itch of what we want to see in gt7 updates particularly new tracks new real world tracks new up-to-date gt cars those are the bits missing if you look at the latest gt car you can drive in gran turismo it's it's really 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 old which is maybe you know not acceptable but something that is a bit more exciting is the first footage has been sort of leaked or shown of GT7 on the PS5 Pro. But we're going to discuss that just after I let you know what else is coming on PS5 Pro. So if you're wondering about whether to pick one up, I would say definitely don't buy one on launch. I pre-ordered one because I want to let you know exactly how all the games are running on it. I'm going to do a lot of analysis of uh, GT7 on it but also the other sim racing games as well. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to support me because your subscriptions really help me able to do these kind of things. So the PS5 Pro trailer didn't just feature Gran Turismo 7, but it also featured F124 and also featured the Crew Motor Fest. Now the Crew Motor Fest, I played a lot of it on PC. It does have amazing graphics on PC. So that's going to be a really interesting test to see if the 4090 here is sort of matching the PS5 Pro or really the other way around. F124 as well, obviously graphics not really the issue with F1 games, it's pretty much everything else. How is that going to be? But if you're a sim racing enthusiast, which you are because you're watching a sim racing show, is it worth picking up the PS5 Pro or is it worth building your own PC? The, the, I don't think you can quite build a PS5, PS5 Pro level PC 
for $699, but it's getting closer. You can certainly build a good PC around the $1,000 mark. So we'll see. So Gran Turismo 7 did make its debut on PS5 Pro at the Tokyo Game Show. So they offered a glimpse of the enhanced version that's going to come ahead of the free update in November. So there was very limited footage that was captured, but some people did capture it. And we could see the real time ray tracing. You know, you know, you can see like cars reflecting off each other as you're racing. I'm not looking at that when I'm racing. To be honest, if you're in cockpit view, it's not going to make that much difference anyway. People did say that on plate on tracks like Tokyo Expressway, it does look really, really, really good. And obviously Gran Turismo 7 is not a game that you can build a PC and play on your PC. Like you have to play it on the PlayStation. So obviously the PS5 Pro version is going to be the best version of Gran Turismo 7 if you're an ultimate Gran Turismo 7 stan. But hold off. I'm not affiliated with PlayStation or anything, but I'm going to let you know my honest views on whether it's worth kind of doing that upgrade. Let's talk about Lemon Ultimate DLC, talked about a little bit earlier. The second DLC pack launched uh, this week, got Circuit of the Americas, got the Alpine A424 and got the Isotta Francini, which is awkward because that team has run out of money and less WEC before it got added to the game. Awkward. Also still got a load of GTE cars. GTE cars are being binned off in WEC. Awkward. Paid for DLC for a beta game. Very awkward. The price is going up on Steam. Massively awkward. So I'm going to try and speak to the guys at Lemon Ultimate, get an interview with them, and I want to put your questions to them. So anyone who's watching, got a question about Lemon Ultimate, any questions at all, put them in the comments. I'll put them to the guys and girls at Lemon Ultimate. Right, moving on to 90 style games, a new retro motorsport management sim. Golden Lap is coming. It's from Funk Selector. It's a follow-up to Art of Rally. That was just kind of like cute looking like isometric rally game. You might remember it kind of got a lot of coverage. And this is a Retro 3 motorsport management game and it doesn't do off-road drifting. It's got like a golden era of Formula 1, which is they say is the 70s and also emergent storytelling. So I'm going to try and pick up a copy of this and actually play it because I'm trying to explore more games in and around sim racing, doing a lot of iRacing, doing a lot of Assetto Corsa, doing GT7, doing Forza, doing Lemon Ultimate, obviously. But I'm also trying to do stuff like GT Manager. I'm also trying to do stuff like Test Run Unlimited. I want to have this kind of breadth and let you know what's going on. So this isn't going to have the budget of F1 Manager, but F1 Manager is pretty much a wash game in my opinion. They've really dropped the ball on that. Right, sim racing in VR. I know you guys and girls love it. I love it as well. So you've got my uh, Pimax Crystal there that I'm using a lot these days. Meta have launched a new VR headset. It is basically, I need to explain this to you because it's a bit cheaper and a bit less powerful than the Quest 3. This is the, the new one, it's the Quest 3S. It's got a little bit lower resolution, but the price jump is the most impressive thing probably. So £289 for the 128 gigabyte base model compared to the £409, this is in the UK, for the Quest 3. Um, it's only got 90 hertz and 120 hertz um, uh, refresh rate, um, which is fine for me. Those are the ones I use anyway. And that's going to be good enough for sim racing with a caveat because you have to remember the Quest 3 and the 3S are stand, you can use them standalone. Therefore, you just put it on. You don't need to have a cable running to a PC. You don't need a 4090, but you should expect that the graphics and everything are going to be worse. So let me know if you want me to try and pick up one of those and I can try and pick up and do some comparisons with the Pimax Crystal on the big boy 4090. Let's talk about motorcycle sims. So track day are from Mad Cow is continued to be updated. There's three new road bikes for free, um, which are road bikes. As last time I covered this, when we were in the studio, if I remember, they were all off-road bikes, now road bikes, modern 600cc and 1,000cc super sport and super bike options. And we've got an old school ride, uh, old school 1,000cc bike with zero rider aids, because I know newer motorbikes come with all these driver aids, like helping you with the traction control and everything. And an old school bike might be Quite fun to drive, still in early access, still doesn't have stuff like a career mode, Italian developer, but just want to make sure I'm covering motorcycle games uh, for you guys and girls out there. But the big news set to course at Evo, and the next big news on the horizon is a Sim Racing Expo. I've got a shipment coming in from Logitech of all of the new Logitech equipment. Chinese manufacturers are running a lot of deals right now because it's Chinese holiday. I know I've got a discount code with Camus right now, I think maybe 15% off. That'll be in the description. Pimax are running something as well. So if you're looking to buy stuff, Chinese manufacturers this summer year doing a lot of deals. I'm going to run through all the logic equipment and let you know if that's worth picking up or not because I've been using the existing one for over two years. Sim Racing Expo. So many manufacturers I'm going to be speaking with. And yes, you might have seen another video 
Um, SimuCube active pedals, I have. I'm going to be letting you know about the SimuCube active pedals. Please, 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 please subscribe. This helps you out. It really helps me out. I was hoping to get to 100k subscribers by the end of September, but we keep pushing, and with your help, we'll make it. So I'll see you in the next Sim Racing show.